Hello and welcome to Form First Podcast, the Sofa Edition. My name is Laura. <laughs> and I'm Peter. We are the founders of Form First Fitness app. In this podcast, we focus on the sport of indoor rowing. We cover topics ranging from health, training, injury prevention, and how technology can help us as athletes to get better while staying healthy. We aim to boil down complex sports science topics, bringing you the latest research from the field of rowing and technology, and recently trying to bring you some practical advice on how to uh, train, recover, activate, and mobilize yourself uh, while staying at home in those volatile times. So, Yeah, exactly. So join us today for another episode of Form First Podcast. Where we'll be talking about strength training. Yes, strength training at home with cool. minimal equipment. So yeah, let's go. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> Welcome today um, from our Sofa Edition podcast. We decided to be a little bit more chilled. Summer's coming. To wonderful weather here in Denmark. You can probably see it from our <laughs> slightly burned faces. Getting burnt and tanned. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, we just decided to talk a little bit about um, kind of, I guess, what we've gained, what we've lost during the times of Corona and what can we do to kind of, um, you know, set ourselves to the best possible uh, path uh, going forward. And one of those things is, um, you know, has to do with the strength uh, that, I think a lot of us have lost during, yeah. um, you know, during the time, uh, kind of staying at home, being a little bit more isolated. Um, I can definitely say that being in isolation, the easiest thing you can do is if you have a rower at home, row at home or run. And we couldn't really train at the gym. We couldn't really train uh, enough with weights, with resistance. Um, that was pretty challenging. We tried to do some stuff, but I, I can say we definitely lost a lot of power uh, and a lot of strength in our training. And I think that's valid for a lot of uh, a lot of people. A lot of countries are still under uh, a lockdown or yeah. in very, very limited um, kind of. Um... Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of countries are. That's that's why I'm actually, for example, happy that here in Denmark, the situation is already getting better. Yes. And we have the opportunity to go to fitness centers. And, and get back to the gym. Yeah. And we've been training outdoors uh, for, for, for a few weeks, but a lot of countries are still under pretty, pretty tough uh, restrictions. So it is important to <clears throat> consider what can we do to, to kind of work on our strength and, and gain power so we don't lose it and then um you know substitute this with adaptations that are more to do with um like cardio uh and endurance but endurance for you know kind of the price of power yeah like strength endurance no more more i would say more endurance because when you can't really work on your power and your strength you you kind of get better at working at a lighter effort but for longer okay yeah which is just um, just what happens when you kind of I would say just just I guess just row or or just run um, and it is it is very very important a lot of um, I mean of course strength is super important for for almost everything from you know the benefits that it gives to the to to the body to the cardiovascular the, um, you know lose you know losing fat uh, gaining muscle having more power in your training um, and also bone density is very very important. Uh, and just just a lot a lot of benefits. I mean, of course, all the you know all the general kind of um, health benefits of um, of training from I guess you know getting getting uh, you know taking care of uh, you know chronic diseases like um, you know like diabetes and heart problems. But you know definitely what, what I for example like after gaining some some muscle mass is that it definitely increases your basal metabolic rate as well yes which means that you basically you can you can take in more calories and that just you know fuels your your body and your your basic maintenance calories yes so that makes further weight for example you're basically example, saying weight. that it's great that you can just eat more while you're just sitting exactly and... <laughs> exactly and then it's like you know my muscles just burn it you know or you know to recover and and maintain yeah. themselves and that is also very very um kind of applicable for rowers again unless you are a lightweight and you are very very close to 
going to um, you know the the more heavyweight categories, um, I guess you know then you would you should watch your weight, you should watch your yeah, definitely um, you know you should watch your fat percentage and how you gain muscles. But if you're like us, basically heavyweight, <laughs> it is yeah. true. Like yeah. Yeah, you just 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 get a little bit more power and a little bit more strength by building extra muscle, um, and yes, you can eat more, of course. But I think what is important to and um, and of course a lot of a lot of rowing uh, websites do recommend um, strength training as part of a good training cycle for for rowing, uh, and of course a lot of the exercises are deadlifts. A lot of the exercises are um, even cleans, back squats, front squats. Um, you know, and some other accessory work uh, and so on. But the thing is that as the gyms are closed, so, so very few of us actually have a proper home gym set up. No. And especially barbells, barbells and bar weights are so, so, so heavy. It's, it, they are so expensive, Ex actually. Yeah, exactly. Expensive and need also space. Yes. So at that point, you probably need like a room for, for, yes. a, for a home gym. Yes. And they're definitely, and they're definitely more difficult to acquire and, um, and yeah, we just want to talk a little bit about what can you do if you have very, very little uh, equipment, if you have very little space um, and you're kind of um, still stuck at home, um, you know, training on your own perhaps, and, and what can you still do to uh, maintain or even build a little bit of strength? So, I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to say, I mean... It is kind of it is kind of tough, but if if you are to if you don't have any any strength equipment or any equipment for resistance, I would recommend few um, few basic stuff. And I think if you get those, they're gonna set you up for a very good kind of mini 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 home gym. I would say for me, this will be some basic weights, and by this, I would say probably kettlebells are the best because yeah. um, kettlebells are super versatile. Uh, you can do so so many things with them. Um, they are great uh, for 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 plenty of exercises. Um, I would say sandbags. If you if Definitely. you if, if you have if yeah. you can if, if you can make yourself one, there are actually quite a lot of good videos of how you can make yeah. yourself one at home. It's pretty cheap and uh, yeah, very useful as well. Yes, uh, if if you don't make it properly, it can get a little bit messy. But hey ho, you save a, a ton of money because. Yeah. Um, you know, proper sandbags are actually quite expensive. Not that much for the uh, production cost of it, but delivery is extremely expensive because... Yeah, it weighs a lot. Yes. So if you can find maybe an option where you buy just the, the sack and then you can fill it up yourself, I guess, of course, with a hardware store, get some sand, and I think that will be a great option. Um, another another thing that I, I think is great, uh, resistance elastic bands are fantastic. Um, if you can, if you can get your hands on some of those, um, in my personal opinion, um, gymnastic rings are great. Uh, yeah. they're very, very easy to hang. You can, you can hang them pretty much anywhere, uh, even indoors, outdoors, super easy. Uh, and they're just such a great option for building, building some strength. And there are so many, uh, exercises you can do with them. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely think that if you are looking into doing like a mini mini home gym with minimal equipment um, to get uh, kind of get the best um, for your money. I definitely think one or two kettlebells or one kettlebell uh, again depending on your strength. But I would recommend go somewhere midweight. You don't want to go too light because again there will be not enough reps in the world to actually get you you like a good workout. But you don't want to go too heavy um, in order to be able to do more exercises yeah. with it so you want to be able to throw it around so to say um so i would say again depending but i would say anything from 12 kilos 16 kilos is probably really really great if you do already have some strength probably 16 kilo is a great weight for you to 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 kind of there's so many things you can do with it uh and then if you're really really strong i guess 2024 20, yeah that would be that would be pretty pretty good uh again a sandbag uh just get yourself if, if you're making yourself one the good thing is that you can actually do it at a weight that you is comfortable yeah for you. exactly it's customizable yeah you can do 20 30 40 50 60 8 kilos yeah depending on how strong you are and there are so many cool stuff you can do with sandbags and they're actually quite fun yeah I, I, I both like them i both love them and hate them yeah but there's like something so cool i don't know why but i always imagine that i'm like I'm like, I don't know, a laborer at the docks. <laughs> <laughs> 
I imagine myself like as a construction worker. Yes, construction exactly. Worker, like, exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 Like a construction Fucking worker. Hard or, like, or, 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 an, um, uh, or, or like on the docks and, and like, you know, throwing like <laughs> heavy bags. And yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I, I feel very powerful and very strong. And actually, sandbags and stones are a great way to, to, to build. Of course, um, having Atlas stones laying around, that's a little bit tricky, uh, but, <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> but you yeah. know what, you should, you can definitely make the best, uh, out of, uh, out of what you have. So that is it. Of course you can go, um, if you have a decent rucksack that you can fill up with, um, I don't know, stuff like books or, or, um, even stones or something like this, that could be a pretty, pretty nice resistance, yeah, but again, it's like it's, a, like a bait twist. Yes, Isn't but it, it? it's going to be a little bit tricky to uh, to use because again, with a, with a kettlebell or with a sandbag, you want the weight to be packed and to be able to drop it and to to kind of throw it and yeah. and stuff. And so it definitely limits you. But if you're super super limited on what you have, you can definitely try this. And there are some pretty cool ideas of like filling up a, a backpack, putting it in a front, getting a little bit of extra weight on your chest yeah. or on your back. If you're doing some back squats, you can do some you know some pulls and. I don't know, a backpack deadlift. How much do you think you can fill up a backpack? Yeah, it's not going to be heavy enough, I think. Yeah, I think so too. But uh, yeah, just, just you can do so much, uh, so many things. And um, and yeah, we just have uh, prepared, um, you know, um, actually two workouts uh, for you. And we're going to roll them after we finish off here. Um, but um, we have prepared actually two workouts with recommended sets um, and reps. Um, uh, we have tried to build them in a way that they use just one weight, one kettlebell. Um, you can do this with a dumbbell. Uh, you can do this, uh, not all of it, but most of it with, um, uh, with, uh, maybe even, a, um, a small, uh, I would say, uh, maybe even a med ball, uh, or, um, I don't know, one of those, uh, you know, the heavy D balls, which are kind of filled up again with sand or with, yeah. uh, yeah, you can, you can pretty much use whatever you have. But again, I think that would be nice with a, with a dumbbell or with a kettlebell. If you have, you know, weights at home in a proper, uh, proper home gym and, uh, and a barbell with weights, this is fantastic. Then, uh, I guess you could do so much more, but we just try to build it in a way that is um, very easy to do. They're just simple exercises. Uh, most of them almost don't need much pre kind of um, any, any, you know, they're not very complicated to, to perform, maybe yeah. with exception of the snatches uh, and so on. And what we have tried to, to build with this is a little bit more power in the legs, a little bit more power in the quads, um, a little bit more... Uh, multi-joint exercises um, to have something to work that kind of that pull, you know, to kind of build a little bit more power um, to get you a little bit extra uh, in your <laughs> drive. Um, uh, there is um, quite a lot of uh, shoulder conditioning um, and kind of sh short shoulder stabilization work uh, in there as well. And, and uh, we have tried to finish off um, each of the two workouts with some core and stabilization work. Uh, again, very, very important to uh, hold on that strength uh, in the midline yeah. in the core. Um, so, yeah. I just want to cover before we, we end, whatever you do at home, and if you're doing any home workouts, I just want to recommend a few, few things. Uh, one of them is, again, just be creative. Just use what you have. Train with what you what you can find. Um, you know, don't, don't, don't go in the way that I have to have the perfect setup before I can go and train. Oh yeah. Just, just, just go for it. Use, use anything you have as, as we discussed. And even if, if, even if it requires buying one kettlebell, I think that's, I think most people can, can afford, afford that. Yeah. Yes. And there's so much you can do with uh, one kettlebell. I mean, yeah. if you do like the workouts, do let us know. We're going to uh, set up some uh, more workouts like this for you. Uh, but there are also pl plenty on the web, uh, and I'm sure you can find something, uh, you know, some very, very cool stuff to do for, for many, many weeks to come. Um, another thing that I would say, so first, just use whatever you have. Uh, second, very, very important, uh, you work at a maximum intensity. This is not a, you know, a regular gym workout where you're going heavy weights and you can, you want to take proper rest. Here, because you're working with a limited amount of, uh, of weight, you're working with limited amount of equipment. You want to have um, you want to have a maximum intensity. 
So you can create this either through doing a Tabata or a heat workout, okay. or just keeping a minimum rest um, at your at your sets. So rest as, as little as you can, even if you want to just do it in a two circuit training where you can just take all the exercises and to, just do one set of each and then go and then go and just try to rest as little as possible. This will allow your muscles to kind of uh, just work a little bit harder um keep your heart rate high and just give you a better workout so higher intensity will give you a better workout um and as we said you can create this either through little rest or some kind of an interval training uh or just doing them i would say as fast as possible unless you want to do tempo work important because yeah. we did schedule quite a lot of tempo uh tempo work um in the in the training but just rest as little as possible between sets if possible not at all and just go straight into the next exercise. Um, I would say also, um, if you have, if you feel really strong and, and for example, this workout is not enough for you, of course, tailor made it, but I would say if you have literally no equipment, still try to do the workout, but, um, but just work to failure. Don't do the recommended reps. You want to work to failure yeah. to allow the muscles to, um, to kind of go to this, um, you know, exhaustion to the point where you actually create those micro tears uh, um, in your uh, in your soft tissues that allow you to build and, uh, yeah. and create more muscle. Exactly. So you want to go to exhaustion, not not to exhaustion. You want to go to failure. So just keep going. Maybe you have way more in the bank than you think. So yeah, and I think definitely is especially if you are dealing with weights that are lower. Yeah. then of course you have to supplement the volume yes. until you yes. know for example i mean you can't really compare but like working out with a 12 or 16 kilo kettlebell is is quite literally um i would say 15 to 20 percent of what we normally work out with on a back squat or or, squat, or, yeah. or 20 percent on a front squat so you can't really compare so if you're working at such a low um such a low kind of uh weight from what you normally do at the gym just, just, just consider that you have to raise the number of reps that much um, yeah. uh, in order to get the same, the, the same workout. Um, and of course, tempo work work is perfect for creating extra tension and extra resistance in your training. And this is normally having a tempo work in the deficit, meaning yeah. in the squats going down. Uh, you're just trying to go as slow as low as possible. In the in the example of let's say any sh overhead or shoulder presses, you want to go as explosive as possible on the way up, and then slower on the way down. So you want to work slower on the deficit, um, and that would also give additional tension. You're going to have some isometric work, um, and you're going to keep your muscles under tension, which will definitely help you get a better workout. And it's a yeah. very very clever tip on getting more work and more intensity. Uh, from lower weight and less reps. Yeah, we had we had this kind of uh, uh, tempo workout uh, what two days ago, and yeah. and my thighs still hurt. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely tempo squats are are fantastic. Just just try to work tempo on onto the deficit, and then work a very very nice explosive um, onto onto the um, uh, the actual exercise. That will give you a very very good uh, tension. Um, and, and kind of get you more. Otherwise, if you, if you just, for example, don't have any weight, uh, and if you just do, for example, uh, air squats, we probably can go, uh, I don't know. And many people Once. can probably go yeah. as well. Our, if you think about it, rowers have great legs and they can probably do hundreds of yeah. squats. And that doesn't, that's not going to give you any, any strength. That's not going to give you any, any real power or, you know, that would just kind of go, I guess, into the realm of uh, just cardio and, and, and again, endurance. And what you want to do, you want to start building a little bit more power, a little bit more strength. And uh, tempo work is definitely uh, one of the things. And you'll see, we actually uh, can do quite, quite a lot of tempo uh, work in those workouts. They're very, very uh, simple. I would recommend um, if you are, depending on your level, again, you can really up the reps. You can definitely up the weight. Uh, you can add more exercises, but if you're beginner to intermediate, I would say try those workouts, uh, do them. Uh, I would say there are two workouts, do them maybe twice a week on top of your regular rowing sessions, uh, do them for a couple of weeks and see how you feel. And, uh, yeah, it will be awesome. If you do like them, let us know. 
uh, I will prepare some more of those uh, for you. Yeah, definitely. We would love to hear that, uh, hear your response yeah. to, to the workouts in the comments. Yeah, definitely. And you can always find us on formfirst.app. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can drop us off an email or leave some comments below. Uh, find us on Instagram and uh, Facebook and yeah, SoundCloud YouTube and SoundCloud and, uh, and everywhere. So Spotify. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I guess we get into the workouts and uh, yeah, cool. stop yapping. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for being with us today on our sofa. <laughs> on this perfect, perfect uh, Danish summer day. Um, and we'll see you next week. Cool. Bye. See you then. All right, everyone. So um, this is exercise one from session one. And this is tempo squat with kettlebell and raising halfway through. So what that means is you go down. So your eccentric is a, a tempo. It's good to do either three or four or five. The slower you do it, the harder it will get. Then you raise uh, halfway into your squat, go down and then come up. This will actually allow you to really, really get a lot out of your squats with uh, less weight and less reps, as it actually makes it quite challenging, even uh, despite of the small weight I'm using here. The next exercise is a tempo deadlift with a deficit. What that means is that you're trying to have a little bit of extra deficit, meaning stepping on something uh, a little bit uh, higher, some kind of an elevation that could be boxes, that could be weights, pretty much anything. Uh, the idea of this is just to get a little bit higher range of motion, uh, stretching the hamstrings and the glutes a little bit more and getting a little bit more work from them. Don't forget to keep your back uh, really nice and straight as you do this. The next exercise is a Bulgarian split squad. Um, this is a really, really great exercise to kind of load the legs, uh, the hamstrings in particular, a little bit uh, more uh, as you're working just on uh, one leg. Uh, this is also a great exercise if you cannot do pistol squads. So uh, it is very important to um, keep your um, the leg that you're working at about 90 degree as you go down. Um, and it is really, really uh, important also um, to make sure that you feel how you're loading the glutes, uh, whatever stance you're doing. So the next exercise is um, kettlebell high pulls. So here we just want to work a little bit more explosiveness, a little bit the traps, the shoulders. Uh, it is just very important as you do this to keep your elbows up in the pull position uh, and kind of drive through the hips. Next, we have um, kettlebell rows uh, with a single arm. It is very important as you're doing them to make sure that you pull back instead of kind of up to get maximum activation of the lads. As you can see, uh, as I'm doing the rows, my elbow goes uh, more kind of backwards and uh, you know, towards the lower part of my back rather than going uh, high up um, into more towards the shoulder and the midline of the back. So these were all the exercises for legs and for back. And this last exercise is called Turkish Get Up. It is quite challenging, but it is fantastic for stability, shoulder stability, and a little bit of core work. So what you have to do, you uh, go from a sitting position into a lunge position, into a standing position. There are plenty of videos on the internet. You can see in more details how to do Turkish get up because it is, it is super nice and simple when you're used to doing it, but at the beginning can be a little bit challenging. Still fantastic for stability work and some core work. So huge, huge recommendation uh, to do Turkish get up. So for our session number two, uh, we again, we're going to start with a little bit of load on the legs uh, and we're going to do uh, kettlebell squat cleans. And what that means is that we're going to take the kettlebell, we're going to clean it to the shoulder and then we're going to squat with it. And this is again a nice way to work a little bit pulls, uh, kind of work a little bit extra strength within the pulls and also load the legs with some squats. You can either do a couple of on the side or just keep alternating them. So this is one-legged stiff leg deadlift with a tempo. So it's a little bit tricky, but 
this is basically just a way to just load one leg uh, instead of two, just making it a little bit more challenging so you can work with lighter weight. What is important here is to kind of try to keep your, your working leg as straight as possible uh, and just to kind of keep a little bit more stability um, and, and the back leg is just for stability. So don't worry about uh, raising your back leg too much. What is important to actually feel a stretch in the glutes uh, um, and, uh, and the quads and just um, have a little bit kind of, uh, yeah, a little bit of stability work also. So uh, here we have just some very, very simple, simple kettlebell lunges. Um, it is really, really, really great exercise for the legs and for the glutes as well. Um, if you are um, good with your overhead mobility and you want a little bit more stability, shoulder and core stability, you can also do them with an optional overhead position. I really, really like this exercise. It's just so, so great. You can do it in one spot or you can just move back and forth. Uh, last uh, but not least uh, for power, uh, we have some kettlebell snatches alternating. Um, this is a great, great way to kind of work the full body and just really create a little bit more power and explosiveness in, in that pool. And working with a kettlebell rather than with a barbell will really allow you uh, to, to create that really great if you can do it i recommend kettlebell snatches any day of the week so lastly we are actually going to work a little bit of the core and this is alternating v-ups uh, meaning that we are going into a v-up and as you can see i'm twisting my body just to create a little bit of extra stretch and tension to the side of the core muscles um, if you are a beginner do 10 meaning five and five um, maybe 20 if you are intermediate or 30 if you're advanced and then you go directly into an elbow plank well I do have to admit that my plank is a little bit high here maybe I could have got my uh, pelvis a little bit lower but what is important is to keep your pelvis tucked into your belly button yeah you can do it either from elbows or hands oh. 